Well, today's session is dedicated to the significant reconstruction task facing Queensland uh, in the wake of those terrible floods and, of course, Cyclone Yazi. We have had lots of interest on this topic, as you'd expect, from right around the state, right around the country and, in fact, even overseas. Dozens and dozens of questions have come through and, unfortunately, we won't be able to take them all today, as you'd expect. So let's get underway and, and I guess before we start talking about reconstruction, it's probably important to note that parts of the state are still in the grip of a relentless monsoon season. So Premier, a good place to start I guess, and Lisa and Alison both in North Queensland would like to know, what are you going to do to help the people who are still in the actual disaster phase? What's the government doing to coordinate assistance, including the basics like household items? Well thanks Lisa and thank you for that question. Uh, in Queensland, we manage our disasters uh, from the local level up and every area has a local disaster management group that has uh, senior people from local government and relevant state agencies, so the police, the emergency management people uh, and where, where appropriate or possible non-government agencies like the Red Cross. And they are still meeting uh, in the far north in the, uh, the council of Cassowary Coast where uh, towns like Tully and Cardwell and little places like Curramine Beach and Silkwood are still, as you say, experiencing flooding. Uh, and every day they meet uh, at least once and sometimes twice, working through where do we need sandbags, where do we need some tarpaulins, how do we, where do we house people who might not be able to stay in their own home. Oh, I think Grantham's a great example. It's, a, it's really um, a good case in point in that the government's moved at the speed of light. Um, I was there second day after the disaster with Graham Newton, who's the uh, CEO of the Reconstruction Authority, and uh, clearly had mapped out by that stage a joint approach where all the instruments, that have, all the powers that have been given to the authority could be used. So in very quick time there was a temporary uh, local town plan change, some amendments to go through the growth management boundaries for South East Queensland so that some land could be taken out and a new area created. You know, as disastrous as these events have been, uh, there is a little uh, silver lining there, I think, that it, it did actually, it pulls people together and uh, people say to me, you know, that things like they've waved at their neighbours across the road uh, for 10 years and never really talked to them and, uh, you know, within two days of the event they were walking through each other's bathrooms, uh, you know, as they helped to pull the ha their houses uh, apart and, and clean them. So uh, people suddenly have built uh, friends, uh, friendships out of this. And I think it does um, speak very powerfully about the success of multiculturalism in, uh, in Australia. And I think here in Queensland, we are, it's one of our great strengths. All, all options um, for future uh, resilient building or, or flood mitigation uh, are on the table for consideration. Uh, I, I think a lot of people who suggest uh, the, the erection of levies may not fully understand the implications of erecting a levy. Um, we, we are looking at the moment at, at uh, some levy options with respect to the flood mitigation of Rockhampton Airport. And as you get the experts involved, and I'm, I'm not, a, uh, not a hydrologist and I'm not an engineer, so you know, I, I speak with and engage the experts, and the, the impacts, uh, local impacts of building a levy to protect one piece of land will always push that water somewhere else. What job creation measures um, have you come up with for people out of work in cyclone and flood devastated areas, especially the farmers? Could they be employed in the reconstruction work so that they don't feel that they're just getting handouts? Some, some unemployment questions coming through. Sure. One of the things that we've done, um, particularly across cyclone, the areas devastated by cyclone Yazi, was put in place employment programs that do precisely just that. One of the, tr one of the struggles in far north Queensland is without that sort of effort, you get people who will leave the region. and. Um, then, a season later, they're desperate for workers and unable to tap them. So one of the things we've done in concert with councils, in concert with uh, local environmental groups and through the Green Army program that we're already running is hook people into those programs to ensure that they can do worthwhile things from farm cleanup to environmental cleanups so that the people are there engaged um, in an employment program and, there or, and thereafter uh, still resident in the community for the future. And some of the worst hit are the smallest councils in this disaster. The Cassowary Coast up in the far north, the Lockyer Valley, you know, the, the, ex, the cost on them is something they just, it's beyond their capability three financial. Budgets, it's three budgets worth. Yeah. It's yeah. three budgets worth, beyond yeah. their financial yeah. capability, so we're paying it up front and doing it in a different way. I just have to, I have to block his ears, or the, sorry, the Treasurer, we're happy, we're satisfied. The money's on the yeah. table. Um, well, the that's federal, good to hear. The federal no, government. Get that recorded. <laughs> <laughs> First time for everything. This is going live. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> we, we've got a big message out there and that is Queenslanders have a holiday in Queensland, uh, help a fellow Queenslander, go and lie on a beach, go and walk in a rainforest. Uh, if you've got relatives, friends, interstate, send them a postcard and invite them here for, the, for their family holiday this year. If we're really serious about you know, helping people, uh, as, um, as Greg said, it's not all about donations and money, some of it's about just being here when you need them. And uh, our tourism industry needs visitors and needs bookings like it's never needed them before.